Hello all. So in this lecture, we will see tuples in Python. So mainly we will see how to create a tuple, then how to access elements inside a tuple, and also we will see how to slice these tuples. So first we will see what is a tuple. So tuple, it is a sequence, it is a type of sequence that resembles a list. So we have already seen a list. So we can store a list a sequence of elements or a number of elements inside a list. Similarly, in tuple also we can have a sequence of items inside a tuple. The only difference between tuple and list is that tuple is immutable. Immutable means we cannot change the and uh, we cannot change the content inside a tuple. But in the case of list, we can modify the contents which are stored in the list. But in the case, uh, so list is mutable. We have already seen it is mutable, so we can change it. But in the case of tuple, it is immutable. We cannot change the contents inside the tuple. And tuple literal is indicated by enclosing its elements in parentheses. In the case of list, we have used square brackets, but here we have to use parentheses. Instead of uh, square brackets, we will be using parentheses to figure out it as a tuple. Okay. We will see this example. So, how to create a tuple? We will see some examples. Okay. So, I am creating a tuple animals equal to. I have to use this parenthesis. Then you can store any elements. I am storing two animals here. Okay. Cat and then dog. Okay. Now, if you check, you can see that it is a tuple with two elements cat and dog. You can store any type inside a tuple if you want to store. If you want to store a name, then I want to store an integer. Then if I want to store a floating point number, everything can be stored. So we have already seen the case of a list also. The, similarly, in the case of tuple also, you can store any type of elements inside this tuple. Okay. Then you can have another list also. So I will use the same example. I will use the same example here. Now I am storing a list inside this. Now I have stored a list. Then if I uh, if I want to have another tuple inside this. Okay. So if I check this example, now it contains Arun, then uh, string, then after that an integer, then we have a float point number, then we have another list inside this tuple, and this is another list in uh, sorry in, uh, another tuple inside this tuple. So this is known as nested tuple, nested tuple. So we can have any number of nesting levels. So in this way we can create tuples. One thing to note, if you are going to create a tuple, it is not mandatory that you have to include parentheses. Without parentheses also, you can create a tuple. Okay. Sorry, a tuple. So if you check fruits, then it will be like this. So it contains two elements. So I have omitted parentheses here. So without parentheses also, you can simply separate with commas and you can uh, create this tuples. Okay. So it is not mandatory that you have you should include this parenthesis. You can avoid this parenthesis also, but it is always better to include this parenthesis. Okay. Parenthesis should be there. It will it will increase the readability of the program. Now suppose I want to create a list with a single element. I have only one element to be stored in the sorry. I have stored only a single element in the tuple. So I have stored that single element Arun, inside this tuple. So if you check example, so you can see that it is returning a string. If there is no parenthesis, then it means it is a string. You can check whether it is a string using this type. 
type of example if you check type of example it will see the show the class so class is str this means example is actually not a tuple even though we have uh, we want to store it that as tuple and we have given as par inside parenthesis and inside double quotes we are given a string also but it is storing only a string so it it is returning a string type so in order to store a single element what you have to do is example 1 equal to if i want to store the same element okay, if i want to store the single same single element inside this tuple what you have to do is i have in, have to include a comma at the end after the element i have to include a comma then this will become a tuple so you can check so if we check then it becomes a tuple here okay now if you want you can simply check the type also type of example one if you check the type of example one it is now class tuple so if you want to store a single element you have to include a comma after that element otherwise it will become a string type okay So we have seen already seen this examples animals and we have seen also this example then we have also already seen without this parenthesis also we can define tuples uh, then we can have nest tuples like this we can have nest tuples also inside this we can store list also and how to create tuple with one element we have already seen so this becomes a string if you are not using a comma at the end. So if you have to have this, we have to use this comma, then it will become a tuple. So next topic is accessing elements in a tuple. So how to access elements in a tuple? So in the list case, we have already seen, we have used this index operator to access elements, square brackets, to access elements. Uh, my tuple of five. You, you you will get the fifth element or the sixth element you will get the sixth element so access an item in a tuple is also using the same index operator here the index starts from zero like in the case of list here tuple also the index starts from zero so if there are n number of elements then the index will be from zero to n minus one last element will be n minus one and first element will be zero then index error can occur if you are trying to access some other uh, out of range value. So if there are five elements and if you try to access uh, index at seven or eight, then index error can occur. Then index must be an integer. So inside whatever we give inside the square brackets, it should be of integer type. We cannot give floating point or any other string type or anything. So it must be an integer. Otherwise, type error will occur. Then nested tuple are accessed using nested indexing. So we will see the examples. So we will see some examples. Then you will see how to you access these elements. So I am storing a tuple. My tuple equal to. So I am storing some characters. H E. Okay, so I am storing hello inside this thing. This is my, my tuple and we are storing some elements. So if you want to access the first element, so you know first element. So you have to use the square bracket index operator. This is index operator. So first element will be zero and if you check, it will be H. Then if you want to access the last element, last element, so it will be it consists of 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So, 5 elements. So, the last element will be 4. So, my tuple of 4, it is O. If I want to try to access some other element which is out of bound, my tuple of 5, then index error will occur. Or if you try to access using some floating point number, 6.0, like that, if you are given, then in, uh, it will show a type error. Type error can occur. 
Okay. Now it is not necessary that it should be an integer. It can be an expression which evaluates to integer also. So if you are storing my tuple of five, uh, six minus two, six minus two, sorry, six. 6 minus 2, then it, 4 o will be written. 6 minus 2 means 4. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So you can have expressions like this, but that expression should evaluate to an integer. Then you can have minus also, like in case of list we have seen, you can have access the last element using minus 1. My tuple of minus 1 means this element o. Okay, similarly, you can have any elements minus my tuple of minus two. Then the last and last L, L will be written. The last element L will be written. So this way you can access elements. So you have to use indexes. So you can have minus subtraction from here. Also, you can use expressions. So if you use um, 4 minus 3, sorry, so use that 3 minus 4, 3 minus 4, then it will be 3 minus 4 is minus 2, so that my, oh, 3 minus 4 is uh, 1, minus 1, so the last O will be written. So in this way you can access the elements inside the list. Okay, so these are some of the examples I have shown this five times. So we have seen all these examples. You can access using this index 0, 5, 6. And if you try out of bound, then index error will occur. If you give a float point, then type error will occur. Okay. Then this is another example we have already seen. Minus 1, we can give minus 4 or 6 minus 2 or 4 minus 7. Any type of expressions can also be given, which has to be evaluated to some other integer values. Now, how to access elements from a nested tuple? Okay, we will use a nested tuple. We will use this nested tuple here. Uh, I'll use the same nested tuple here. Now, I want to access, I am adding some more elements here, 45. And I am adding some floating point number inside this tuple, 32.6. Okay. So this is a list now. So if I check this example, it will consist of this number of elements. So if I want to access a particular element, so example of zero. So how to access example of zero means it will be the first element. So Arun will be written. Now example of, I'll check, see this is zero, this is one, two. If I want this list, then it is a, a fourth element. So fourth element means you have to use third element, P. Then that list will be written. And if you want to access the last element, you can use minus one. Then that element will be written. Or you can use example of four. So that will be the last element. Now, if I want to access an element inside this nested uh, nested thing, if I want to access this nested list, so if I want to access this 56.7, so what you have to do is, uh, that that is a third element, that is a third element, and if I want to access this 56.7 ever, then it, this, is, this is zero and this is one. So I have to give use a nested indexing mechanism. The example of three comma one means it will be fifty six point seven. Similarly, if I want to access something inside this tuple, then I have to use this example of four. That is a fourth element. Fourth element means this I know fifty six this thing. And if I want to access the last element from this thing thirty two point six, if I want to access that, then this is a third element. So I have to use two here. then you will get this 32.6. So in this way, you can access the nested elements from a tuple. If it is a nested 
couple or a thread list you can access like this. Okay. So this is an example. I have shown this example nested. We have a list like this. You can access using this thing. You can use any indexes one, two, three. If I want to have uh, like this indexes are there, you can access using. So if you want to access, I will show another example to access a particular string also. So if I want to access uh, the four element, four uh, example of four is this is the fourth element. This is the fifth element. Four means fifth element. And if I want to access this n, then you can access using example of zero. I know is zero. And if I want to access the second element, then I have to use one. So if I give this, then n will be returned. So n will be returned. So, so this n will be returned. So if I want to access this n, what I have to do is, so this is the fifth element. This Apple is the fifth element. So fifth element means you have to use fourth index. Then inside that, I know is the first element. So you have to use zero. Then n is the second element. So you have to use one. So in this way, you can access individual elements inside this. So this is a nesting, nesting of tuple. Nesting of tuple. Okay. So in this way, you can nest. So this is, these are not examples. Same example. Next topic is slicing. So slicing means substring. You have already seen in slicing in strings also. It is you can get substrings. So in list also you have already seen how to get sublist. So similarly in tuples also we can get part of a list. So it is a range of items in a tuple can be accessed by using the slicing operator colon. The same colon operator where we have used in in the case of list. The same operator we can use for slicing of tuples also okay and uh, changing or deleting a tuple so since tuples are immutable we cannot change or delete a thing we will see that in the next lecture okay so we, we will see the slicing example first so how to slice this element okay so I will take some example to slice this example, uh, use some example. So I will use some, so I will use the same example here. Example, so if I take an example, these are the values. So if I want to get some slices, so if I want to get the, uh, I have used the slicing operator, that is colon. So if I simply give like this, the whole list will be written. Okay. <coughs> Or if I start with zero and I am not giving the last value also, the whole list will be returned. Now, if I want to have only the two elements or three elements, first three elements, I have to use example, colon, then the first two elements will be returned. Zero and first element will be returned. So excluding two, zero, one will be returned. Excluding two, those elements will be returned. Then all these things is possible. So if I want to use uh, some elements from first element, second element to fourth element, then it will be written like this. So second element, this is 65.7 is second element, then up to four I have asked. So excluding four. So two and three will be written. So three is another list. So in this way I get slice this. Slice. So using the slicing operator colon, we can slice the list. <laughs> so these are the examples. So slice like this, we can use one, two, three, or up to three. All these things can be done using slicing. Then uh, changing or deleting a couple, we will see in the next uh, lecture. So these are the references. Thank you.